I'm on the road to publishing my first mobile game, the no-code way of course, and I wanted to take you with me on that journey. The whole project started because I wanted to do a special episode for Build It With Jonas for Halloween. Build It With Jonas is a series that I host over at the Bravo Studio YouTube channel and I wanted to build a full text adventure. And the idea that came to me was to make this spooky story app so people could play through a spooky story during Halloween. When you open the app, you can choose from a list of Halloween themed stories. When a story is loaded, the first page is displayed. All future pages are shown to you depending on the choices you make. So one choice might lead to a different ending than another, and that's what makes these stories interactive. The entire project was built on Bravo Studio using Backendless as a backend provider. And as you know, I'm a big fan of open development, so you can find a full step-by-step -step guide on how you could build an app like this yourself over at Bravo Studio's YouTube channel. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome first of all, but let me quickly show you how Bravo Studio works. This is the Figma file that I created for the app, so these are the elements that will be imported into Bravo later. If you are a Bravo enthusiast and want a full rundown of all of the elements here, check the video in the description. The only difference in this file from the file I had in the video is that I now have the app assets here and also a welcoming intro screen. But as always, I'm going to link that Figma file from this episode in the description below as well. This file was then imported into Bravo, which basically takes all of the elements and converts them to native code. So Kotlin for Android or Swift for iOS. And this is the code that we can then later publish to the stores. In here, I can bind certain elements to data. For example, I have this list of stories here and then I basically get the name of the story and put it in the placeholder I made for the name. That data that I mentioned, so for example, a title or thumbnail of a story comes from a database. And our way to access that database is through request URLs. These request URLs allow us to send a request and get the data in return. Backendless knows what I want when I type in this request URL. And in this case, it responds with the list of stories. So for example, you could go here, see that we have the name and this is the name of the story then. This is the Bravo flow in its core. So taking an Adobe XD or Figma file, connecting it to data and then taking that bundle, converting it to native code, which you can then publish later. I have mentioned Backendless as our database a couple of times now, and this is how it looks. So for example, here we have the stories, both of our stories with their respective data. Even more interesting, all of the pages that we have inside of the app. So you always see the text of that page as well as the option that leads to it. So what did the user press in order to get to that page? And all of the options underneath that text where the user can choose where to go next. This kind of takes the magic out of it, but this is still an educational channel. One of the many cool things when building a new product is actually creating its brand, because you have total freedom. And that's exactly what I took as an advantage when building this brand. The name that I then landed on is Choi Story. So basically a combination of the words choice and story. It's not the best name, but I was under pressure. I even tried some different techniques. For example, this one where I just had a piece of paper, wrote down every word that is somehow associated with the app and choice and story were just some things that I really liked. These words were what influenced me with the logo as well. I always like to do my own logos and in this case I wanted to go with an octopus because I felt like the arms would represent the different kinds of endings that you could have based on the choices really well. Since this was initially meant for Halloween, I wanted to make it scarier. The idea of having an octopus with a giant eye isn't new, but I felt that it would really fit in here because the eye could also resemble the reading part that you would have to do in order to play these stories. It turned out more cute than scary but I really like it. For the color scheme, I wanted to go with something dark and moody, which is why I chose this kind of dark mode color. As the accent color, I chose orange because that is often associated with pumpkins or Halloween. Building the app was just the beginning because now I'd get time to write my own spooky story. It was actually pretty fun and reminded me how cool it is to just build your own little universe. My story is about escaping from a secret laboratory and depending on the choices you make, you either get out or you die in the process. But I have to say that it was quite tricky to just figure out the right system on how to write such a story because you can't just write a word document like that. After trying out a couple of different options like text editors or Twine, I landed on the free software Quest, which lets you create what they call gamebooks. This is exactly what I needed. They allow you to create different pages and link those through options. 
Additionally, I asked a buddy of mine from college to write a story too, because he's a real horror fan. And he wrote this crazy story about an abandoned mansion. And as you walk through it, you discover more about the family that used to live there. I don't want to spoil it anymore. It's really cool and you should check it out in the app. He gave the story to me in Word documents, which were organized within folders. So I knew which option directed to which Word document. I was able to add that into Backendless pretty easily as well. But for version 2.0, I'm thinking maybe add some kind of importer, which allows me to take the story directly and paste it with all of the relations into Backendless more easily. With all the functionalities implemented and the stories written, the app was ready to be installed on a phone. But in order to properly publish it, there were still a couple of things to do. I organized everything inside of this big to-do list. Some of these parts are actually from my Notion template for app publication that I did for Bravo Studio a while back. You can find things like joining the developer programs for both Android and iOS, as well as preparing the landing page, which I'd actually did in WordPress. I bought the domain name and mapped one of the instances from my multi-site setup to it. I created the actual design inside of Elementor, a drop and drag builder for WordPress. Lastly, I added the privacy policy, which is linked inside of the app, as well as the store listings. One of the to-dos is actually that I want to publish the app on Product Hunt. I know that I don't have any chance at winning the product of the day, especially when there's no iOS version. But I think that the Product Hunt badge would fit really well on the landing page, so I'm just going to do it anyway. One word about the iOS version of this app, because I initially intended to publish it both on iOS and Android. I even bought a used MacBook, just because you need one in order to publish something to the App Store. Unfortunately, the navigation inside of iOS is handled differently than Android. So when I built the app for Android, the navigation part didn't work in iOS as well. Just to quickly illustrate that issue, we have A and B pages. The A page is opened when you open the first page and you select an option, opening the B page, which in our case is the second page. But when you go to the third page, you go back to the A page, but the A page is still displaying the info from the first page and not the third. Unfortunately, I only realized that when I had everything ready for the App Store. But I now bought a refurbished iPhone, so we're ready to go for the next time. For transparency reasons, let's have a look at all the cost points for keeping this app alive. I'm using the free version of Figma. Then, the Bravo subscription as well as a backend provider, in my case Backendless. For the landing page, I need a domain name as well as a web hoster. The domain name was optional of course, but I'm using the rest in my job anyway. In conclusion, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. The project was just for fun, so I didn't expect anything big. I just wanted to reach that publication goal and also have an app out there that doesn't require any much management. So the only thing that I have to do now or that I could do is add new stories, but I don't have to. The app would still run without them. It won't grow in its user base or anything, but it's out there and that's the most important thing. I just think that it's so cool that we now have tools on the market where you can have an idea and two weeks later you make it public. Let me know in the comments if you would like to know more about these projects that I'm doing on the side. I'm still trying to figure out where I want to go with this channel in the future and if these videos are even interesting. So please rate them so I know if I'm even going in the right direction. That's all for now, so thank you for watching.